fiance wanted an open marriage, so I called off the wedding. People are asking questions. Should I let them know why? Two weeks ago we were two weeks away from getting married. She asks me to go to therapy with her. She was already seeing a therapist on her own, and wanted me to go with her and have a talk, before the wedding, where we could be completely honest with one another. That sounded a little weird to me, I thought we were already completely honest with one another, after all, we were getting married in two weeks, right? Also, she was super protective about her therapy sessions, didn't really talk about them. I have never met her therapist. So to be invited there all of a sudden seemed a little out of place to me. The day comes, and I go there. But out of self-preservation, I had my phone opened and recording any audio. My fiancé was already there. I had to wait 20 minutes before I was invited in. The therapist greets me and shakes my hand. We have small talk. She tells me I am not at all the way my fiancé described me. I think she is trying to compliment me. Then she looks at my fiancé and tells her this may be harder than we thought. That absolutely weirded me out. But I am a calm and collected individual, and I don't react, just kept that dumb smile on my face we all have in awkward situations. So the therapist starts talking. Has a small speech I don't care to repeat. My fiancé takes my hand as the therapist starts telling me that we live in a modern world, and that my fiancé wants us to have a non-conventional marriage moving forward. I smile, I am not sure what the hell that means, through my mind I am thinking she wants to talk how she will not be a slave to her husband, she will not sacrifice her work life, etc. Modern woman and girl power and all that. Nope, she is actually talking about how once we get married, she wants to be free to sleep with other men. The other non-traditional type of marriage. I forgot it's 2018. But she loves me a lot, and would not be comfortable with me having the same benefits. Because she would be too heartbroken knowing that I find other women attractive and that one of them could steal me from her. So I let them finish talking. They were very fluent, and they got more confident talking, probably empowered by my lack of reaction, and because I wasn't saying anything. This was definitely something they have rehearsed. I then asked the therapist if she is licensed. This, by her reaction, was not what she expected to be the first thing coming out of my mouth. She said yes. So I told her to explain to my fiancé why we will not be getting married anymore, and why we will not continue being a couple starting immediately. I wished them good luck, and left the office. Now, I want to report the therapist. I am not sure if I have to report her to the clinic, or is there a board that supervises therapists? I don't think they're planning an attempt to corner me as professional conduct, and I want her to pay for the misconduct. That session did not sit well with me. To be clear, there would have been no positive outcome to this talk my fiancé and the therapist had with me. Even if she wanted a completely open marriage, where I could sleep with other women, the outcome from my part would have been the same. That's is not a marriage, that is a sham. It also dawns on me, she might have cheated on me. Now that I have this clarity of mind, certain things don't match up. So I was a fool anyway. I listened to the recording, and I still can't believe what was said there. Anyway, I called off the wedding. I am a very easygoing guy, there are no fights with me because I am not seeking them. There are no conflicts, enemies, because my life is guided on principle and common sense. That might have given my ex the impression I will be easy to walk over, like a doormat, but she is an idiot for thinking that. Having listened to the recording a few times, I am confident the therapist recognized I am not how my fiancé must have described me in their sessions. Hence the this may be harder than we thought. Now that the wedding is no longer happening, people are starting to ask questions I am not comfortable answering. How do I navigate this C? I am sure my ex is doing damage control, but I have the recording, and if she goes too far off the path, I will not shy letting people know what she wanted us to talk about. But my parents and family also want answers, and I am not sure what BS to tell them. I don't want them to think I am an idiot for allowing my ex to get to this point where she was so confident that she straight out told me she wants to fuck other dudes. She is also blowing my phone, my best friend's phone, my brother's phone. We can work on this, I didn't understand what they were telling me in the therapy session, she will do anything to fix this, it was the therapist's idea, she was against it, etc. Last cry of a dying siren. All her cries fall on deaf ears, and I am the owner of said ears. We were also working to get a loan to buy a house, but I cancelled everything. I basically erased any ties we had financially, or otherwise. Her current plea is that in therapy she exposed her insecurities about our sexual history. I had considerably more partners than her, and the therapist came up with the idea we should level the field. 
regardless of the truth of this, that therapist gets reported once I figure out where to do it, and what to say. This post is mostly a rant, but I would also want to know how would you handle the questions of friends and family. My ex is certainly doing her own damage control, and I don't want to be a he said, she said. I do have the recording, and am wondering if I should send it to the interested parties. Monday last week I talked with a lawyer at work about the situation with the therapist. He looked at me like I was bullshitting him, and asked me if this was a prank. So I asked him if he wants to hear the recording. Damn right! Was his answer. I talked again with him the next day, at the end of it. He noted a few things I didn't pay attention to. On the recording, the therapist was always saying we think, we want, we talked about, we decided. Not once did she say your ex here asked me to talk with you or your ex wants you to know, or anything like that. It was always we this, we that. He also asked me what my end game is. Do I want to sue? He didn't think I personally have a case, to which I agreed. I never intended to sue anyway, but notify the appropriate institutions and let them deal with the therapist. A decision was made to write two letters. One addressed to the clinic the therapist works at, and one for APA, we checked. She was accredited. By Wednesday there were a few more people at work aware of the situation, including one of the two case researchers. She dug up information about the therapist, online reviews, as well as the contacts for two of her previous patients. The therapist didn't have the best reviews, there were people upset with her, and we managed to track the two we talked with through social media. They were more than happy to help once we explained the situation, and their stories were not any better than mine. The letters grew a consistent size, as we included the signed stories from the other two individuals, as well as my own description of how my ex changed once she started the therapy sessions, and a detailed description of how my meeting with the therapist went. Friday last week I met with the parents. Her parents came to my parents' house, and we had the talk. My ex was there too, and more info was disclosed. That made its way to the report on the therapist as well. This week, we sent the reports out. There was a reaction from the clinic. They called our office on Thursday morning, most probably to check if it is a prank or a real issue. We talked with their lawyer, or one of their lawyers, over the phone, and, when we confirmed it was legitimate, someone else was heard in the background, on their end, with a well, cramp. They said they are taking this very seriously. A conclusion from one of the guys at work was that they probably received other complaints before, but this is the first time someone did it so well documented. Their letter also mentioned we are reporting this to APA, that might have turned the heat on as well, hence their quick reaction. I don't know what the result of this will be, and I consider my issue with it closed. However, having talked with the other two individuals that were treated by this therapist, I sincerely hope she is at least investigated, because she sounds insane and with an agenda, she ruined their relationships as well. One of the individuals was a woman, for the record. Then, my ex and her parents. Friday last week my parents called me and asked me to give them a visit after work. When I did, surprise. My ex and her parents were there too. My first reaction, seeing their cars in my parents' driveway, was to flee. This meeting was supposed to be on my terms, but she attempted to take the reins to it. That was not going to happen, let me tell you. My ex was waiting for me outside. She looked very good. If there was ever a girl you'd like your parents to meet, she was the image of it. She told me they are here to talk with me, and see if we can fix this. They as in her parents. She either never told them what happened, or she gave them a version of a story they were not buying. She had a journal with her. She told me she started writing in it before she began therapy, and continued writing in it until that Friday morning. That I should read it and it will clear out all this mess. I told her this is not a book club. I wanted to go inside and get the circus going, but she asked me if I can give her 10 minutes. She wants to talk with me for 10 minutes before I talk with her parents. And she kept handing me her journal, and started crying. And then my sister showed up, and then my ex's sister showed up. They were already there, and came out to check on us. So I took her journal, went inside, said hello, and lead my ex in the back of the garden, to an as isolated portion of my parents' garden as possible, they have a large garden with a lot of trees and benches. She quit her job. The stress was too much, and she had a breakdown. It escalated, never got better. She is no longer seeing the therapist. She started seeing the therapist for work-related matters, but somehow it turned into matters about our relationship, and it stayed focused on the relationship because it was the only thing the therapist seemed interested in. She never told her parents why she is my ex. She is seeing another therapist now. I just listened. 
She turned the discussion from her to us. Told me I would be in control. I will be managing the finances. I will receive access to all her devices. I will be able to track everywhere she goes. Any property we will own will be in my name. She will do anything I want to trust her again. Basically things she said in her messages over the last weeks. She enumerated more things than the ones I mentioned. I don't know how she thinks that would be a healthy life, for either of us. I asked her as she cheated. She told me she had the opportunity to cheat, but she had never. I believe her. But it also angered me. What does she mean she had the opportunity? If you are in a committed relationship, you don't put yourself in a position where you have this opportunity. You don't want this opportunity. It's like saying I had the opportunity to kill someone today. Why? What were you doing that there was such an opportunity? Why call it opportunity anyway, it makes it sound like something positive. That pretty much ended our 10 minutes, and told her we should go and talk with our parents. So we did. I asked our sisters to leave us alone, as it was not any of their concern what was to be discussed. My sister huffed and puffed, but a house made of stone survives hurricanes, and she was not one. Well, I talked, and explained what happened, how the therapy session went, and my resolve. I didn't mention I had a recording, because I never had to. My ex confirmed everything I said, which surprised me. Her father had teary eyes, and that broke my heart. Her mother asked her if this is how she thinks they raised her, and asked for an explanation. My ex basically told them the same story. Stress at work. Depression. Breaking down. Therapy. Therapist wanting to talk only about our relationship. That the therapist told her our relationship was the root of all her stress. That the therapist convinced her I want an open relationship. That she might lose me if she doesn't level her sexual experience with me. How my reaction woke her up from her slump. She quit her job, is looking for something less stressful. She will do anything I want to get me back. Started crying. My ex mentioned the journal again, and said if I read it, it will explain everything, and that she was not on board with the therapist's ideas, but she went along with them because the therapist was a person with authority and experience. Our parents looked at me and I told them someone's private journal is not the type of literature I read, unless they are a dead poet. Big fucking mistake. My intention was to relate that someone's private journals usually becomes literature if they are a famous writer, or leader, and usually they are published post-mortem. Also, I was hoping they get the hint that I don't really want to read her journal, because it would be of no consequence. What was done was done. Everyone looked at me as if I wished death on my ex. You could smell the hostility in the air. So I said fine, fine and promised I will read her journal. You win some, you lose some, and then you use the wrong words and you lose a few more. My ex is seeing a new therapist. She showed her parents emails confirming her appointments. He's an older dude, with a white beard like Freud. I searched him online, he is married, he attends conferences, he wrote a few books, they are on Amazon, ha, huh, seems like a solid character. Can you kids work this out? This was the second thing that angered me that day. As if this is child play, and we should just listen to the adults. We are not old enough to be in control of our own feeling, and we should definitely not be the ones to decide what we consider a betrayal you can't recover from. We are just kids and we should just work it out. So I won back some ground on the dead poet society remark earlier. And this is how the day ended. We've known each other for 9 years, and have been a couple for 5 years. Even if there are legitimate reasons behind her behavior, how do you go back to being the same? This wasn't even a reset. My way of thinking about my ex has been fundamentally changed. She became a stranger I know a lot of things about. Sure, I still find her attractive. Very attractive, the way she looked last Friday was amazing. No denying that. But it was also calculated, I am not going to lie myself here. Hair done the way I like it. Dress that I bought for her, the shoes I like the most, a hint of the perfume I gifted her, etc. The journal. Is on my nightstand. I haven't read it, and I probably never will. I did look through it, to see if it indeed is a year old, and it is. The way the pages folded, the ink is clearly older on the first pages, and you can see it progressing through the pages. The pen she used was attached to the journal, and I tested it, looks like the same ink. And the ink level in the pen is consistent with how much I assume the pen has been used for the last year to write the journal. It is not a fake. Everything about it is consistent with a year's worth of wear and tear. I don't see what good reading it will make me. A tool to play with one's mind? Well, not rally, I don't think a year ago when she started writing it she intended to use it as manipulation. If what she told me is right, 
her new therapist suggested the idea to share the journal with myself. As for how I am handling people that are too curious about why the wedding is off? We had a huge difference of opinion that we could not find a solution to. More or less. But if her sister finds out why, and this is more than likely, because her sister is very close to their mother, everyone will find out the real reason why. Our parents want us to meet again next week. They told me to read the journal, and maybe that helps. Maybe we can work on it. Start again, fresh, since we have so much history. She will get treatment, she will get better, she still is the same woman I fell in love with, but she is not well right now. They can tell I still love her, or else I would not be so theatrical, their words, not mine. I don't think I will meet them next Friday. But, damn. She did look amazing. I would like to thank the community for the support and help. It was enough to help me put together a plan of action regarding the therapist. Thank you to those who provided resources and information about what to do.